much also for the invitation. I've seen in your program uh, that you've had beautiful speakers from all over Ukraine, but also from all over Europe. Um, I've seen that uh, our colleague Annika Lindblom from Finland was there also, and I guess she um, uh, she probably also reported about the Finnish uh, approach and how Finland is doing with uh, involving well the whole of society. And I guess this is maybe a, um, I'm trying to add on that as a as a perspective from Germany how the German Council for Sustainable Development is organizing. Uh, multi stakeholder platforms uh, for uh, reaching the 2030 goals. So, um, maybe just a short overview on who we are as the council. So, um, we are not uh, a state body, nor are we a private body, but something in between. So, um, the German Council was founded by uh, former Chancellor Gerhard Schröder in 2001. So, this year we celebrated. 20 years of our existence. And um, the tradition has been picked up by uh, Schröder's successor, Angela Merkel. And uh, she um, appoints uh, 15 members of this German council, high ranking members from civil society, uh, the private sector, uh, researchers, but also former influential politicians. Uh, and appoints them for three years, and they have three main tasks in this um, in this council. Firstly, to advise the federal government on sustainability issues um, and the German federal sustainable development strategy. So um, we are the ones giving recommendations, um, making policy options available uh, to the German government. Not always to our satisfaction, because of course we always wish more, but maybe that's the role of a consultant. Um, so the second task is to foster the public debate on sustainability. When the council was launched in 2001, sustainability was basically a non-issue. Nobody talked about sustainability. And I guess 20 years in, uh, there's around 85% of the German population who at least um, have an idea what sustainability is and what, uh, what it means. It doesn't mean that they know the concept in every uh, facet, um, but I guess it's the public debate has changed significantly in the past 20 years. Not only, but also thanks to the German Council for And thirdly, um, third task is that the Council um, for Sustainability Projects makes pilots and um, makes in certain fields of action, um, brings forward new initiatives and uh, yeah, uh, showcases uh, projects that haven't been there in the public uh, debate before. So this is uh, maybe the framework in which we're operating. I myself am working as a policy officer, um, mainly on urban development for the uh, Sustainability Council in Germany. So I'm working uh, for these 15 members to make their uh, their voices heard to consult them on their matters. Um, I talked about the projects that uh, the RNE, so that's short for the German Sustainability Council, Rat für Nachhaltige Entwicklung in German, um, that this council uh, initiates projects that in one way or another contribute to sustainable development. And of course, um, you all know the different pillars of sustainable development, environmental, social, and economic aspects. And this triangle is really also um, a leading principle for all of our projects. So um, we have projects that concern more the um, the business side and, and the sustainability code that we offer for uh, enterprises and companies so that they can report on their sustainability initiatives. We have uh, regional hubs that um, consult uh, cities and uh, civil society stakeholders and businesses in in the different regions of Germany and that are hub for debate. Um, talking about uh, food systems, we have one project that's called the Sustainable Shopping Basket, um, which kind of gives an overview of uh, what uh, sustainable lifestyle, an everyday lifestyle uh, could be, which products and services are needed and how much they would cost. Um, then the project that I'm going to talk about in more depth is the Sustainable City Dialogue. It's a forum for 
uh, pioneers among the mayors of Germany were fighting for sustainable development of their municipalities. Then we have an award that is called Projekt Nachhaltigkeit, Project Sustainability, um, that awards um, different kind of stakeholders in their effort for a more sustainable Germany. Um, just this week, we have uh, German Action Days for Sustainable Development. There are over uh, 2,000 activities listed on our map all across Germany that try to put sustainability on focus by very different groups of people, individuals, companies, uh, NGOs, uh, smaller initiatives um, all over Germany. So this is one thing that we do annually to showcase that actually society is ready to do something uh, and put pressure on on all levels of government uh, to make it easier for them to act sustainably. Um, we have a hub for sustainable finance where we talk about um, sustainability in, in the finance sector. We have a fund for small scale uh, sustainability culture projects where we try to bring together artists and uh, initiatives and NGOs and for them to create projects together uh, in local communities. And we have um, uh, funds for this. Um, we did a peer review of the German sustainability strategy in 2018. I guess this is a very good practice also. And thirdly, uh, lastly, we have um, uh, regularly an, an education competition on, on which schools and non-school actors uh, have the best concepts for SDG education to give you an overview of what we're doing. But today, um, so of course, the, the SDGs are... are um, leading uh, framework that we through which the lens through which we look at sustainability but the project um, I'm telling you today about um, as all the other projects basically follow this um, this line of uh, action meaning that SDG delivery needs everyone in society and we can only advance if there is a whole of society approach um, and how this works for the target group of mayors and cities, I will show you now. Um, why is it important um, that we talk about municipalities and cities? Uh, this is the, uh, the greenhouse gas emission charts um, uh, currently, um, 2020 and 2030 targets. Uh, and you see on the very right side that um, at the 2030 goals, with the current measures being taken, uh, we will fail our targets. Um, and the biggest problems are mainly in the sectors of buildings, to be seen in green here, and in uh, transport, to be seen in blue here. So you see um, the left uh, the greenhouse gas emission budget and the, and the um, sector targets, so there's a big gap so buildings and transport are two very important uh, climate uh, uh, sectors where we have to get better. Um, and they are also part of the six transformation areas that are defined in the German sustainability strategy. Um, and these two, mobility and construction, they are very directly touched upon by municipal responsibilities. So this is where the cities can and must act and cities are needed in these transformation areas. Um, so this is why in 2010, the ARNI, the German Council for Sustainable Development, um, established the Sustainable City Dialogue. Um, right now there are around 40 mayors from a lot of major cities in Germany that consider themselves, or that we consider also maybe pioneers of urban sustainability transformation. It's organized and facilitated by us. And these mayors meet once or twice a year. Um, and one of the dialogue members, the mayor of Münster in the west of Germany, is actually also a member of our council. So there's like a double role. Um, so what does this dialogue do? What are the main goals? So one is to really exchange best practice uh, among the mayors, um, because they are often confronted with, um, yeah, with problems that they uh, see in other cities as well and so they can help each other out but also on a very personal level this is the second point peer-to-peer -peer coaching um, sometimes mayors want to exchange on on their personal challenges 
uh, when leading sustainability transformations in a, in a city and how to work with their maybe employees who, who are reluctant uh, to change, maybe uh, their constituents, their citizens uh, that in, in general are all for sustainability and uh, climate transformation, but on the other hand, um, protest against uh, local changes. So um, the peer-to-peer -peer coaching effect within the group of mayors is another important aspect. Um, this dialogue is also there for strategic debates on where we want to be with uh, urban mobility or with uh, construction policy or with other things um, on a federal level, also on a local level. So there's we invite uh, scientists and other important stakeholders to debate with the mayors. And the last goal, which is not the least important one, but I guess maybe the main one, is that we create a forum um, for the mayors to advocate for their own interests and for sustainability, sustainability interests, especially towards uh, the federal government. So what we do, we try to uh, gather their voices and make them stronger together uh, so that they can have an impact and ask the federal government uh, for better legal frameworks, for uh, more financial support. We in Germany have a very differentiated multi-level uh, federal um, political system in which the cities are now intertwined with the lenders, so the regional areas and the federal areas is quite complicated. Um, and there's not a lot of direct dialogue between the cities and the federal government and what we try to facilitate this dialogue. Um, the topics we've touched upon recently are local energy transition, circular city, land and land use policies and urban mobility. And um, one thing that I can uh, just say, because we published it just yesterday, is um, call to action on urban mobility transition for a new uh, federal government uh, that is being elected on Sunday. Um, in this uh, very short paper, um, 10 pages, we together discussed and then wrote down six main recommendations that might make it easier for cities um, to transform their uh, transportation and mobility uh, systems. Uh, but that they cannot change themselves, but they need different or other levels of policy making uh, to change that. So one is the carbon pricing. The the mayors um, that support this uh, this call are actually calling for a higher um, carbon price. They want to reform our planning laws. They um, want to reduce harmful subsidies, uh, sustainability wise. They want more regulatory autonomy for their municipalities. So in Germany. It's all regulated in a federal act on in which specific instances you can uh, talk about speed limits, where you can have parking fees, how high, or if there are congestion charges allowed. So that is a, um, a clear um, federal thing, but they want more regulatory autonomy here. Um, they also want um, the funding that exists on federal level for municipalities be more easy access and to be more, well, to be less bureaucratic. Um, and they want to make use of digital services that needs to be coordinated on a federal level. And they want um, tools to regulate new forms of mobility, especially micro mobility. So you see the, the many e-scooters lying around in the cities. That is a very big uh, problem for a lot of people. Um, but yeah, so um, it's one thing we also published last year uh, for a new strategic project, a sustainability reporting pro project uh, for m municipalities uh, that was initiated by mayors in our dialogue. And so um, the mayor told us, please develop um, a framework that allows us to, to report on our sustainability efforts. Uh, there is no uh, idea on how we should do it. Uh, is there a, maybe can we create a, a, a federal framework that might be interesting for everyone? So we developed it in a broad multi stakeholder process and are now testing it in 2021 and 22 in around 20,000. And so um, 
lastly, I want to talk about the takeaways from 10 years of sustainable city dialogue and how important it is to involve different actors. I guess the first thing is that it's very important to involve those who are affected by decisions um, into policy making because otherwise everything you talk about will not uh, be enough. It will be ineffective. So um, the more uh, the more you involve, the the better the results are. I would say. As with this conference, there are so many good solutions out there. You just need to know about them and then share them. I guess this is what our forum of mayors is there for. Um, the third point is very important to me because it says dialogue and advocacy work work best when the recipient is eager to receive. So when when we talk about advocacy to, towards the federal government, you need a federal government that listens and that wants your advice. Uh, if it doesn't, you need to take other uh, measures that are maybe more strong, that are more into, yeah, more into campaigning, lobbying. I think everyone is an expert, even in, in these very diverse group of people. So um, I would everyone to um, invite to keep attitudes low that I'm always also saying um, in, in these mayor meetings um, that everyone is equal and that there's no one who knows less or knows more than someone else. Um, and that diversity is a strength. That's my next point. Cognitive and illogical diversity uh, makes for better dialogue. So I guess you need to have very different voices on sustainability to make the case for uh, yeah better uh, regulations, for better ideas, but you don't have to start with Adam and Eve. So at least you need a certain commitment for sustainability, for um, dialogue on sustainability to work. And there's a, it's a fine line, but I guess you somehow need to put it up. And um, lastly, I think safe spaces are also relevant for political representatives. Um, our meetings are um, confidential, so nothing that we discuss in these meetings uh, gets out to the general public. They can talk about their, uh, their challenges, about maybe the weaknesses that they see in their cities um, very openly. And I guess this is one of the keys uh, that makes uh, this dialogue uh, work so well and has been working in the past. Much? Contact me, I'm glad. Um, here are my contact details. Um, I guess you'll find me on the web. Jan Ford is my name. Hello. Thank you very much.